Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Sunday live stream. So, uh, welcome in. It's been uh, quite a uneventful week, I guess we could say. And today, what I want to talk about is the same thing that I've been getting this these comments, these questions, these concerns, which is, you know, things aren't really moving. We're going kind of sideways. What's really going on? And uh, is this time different? Is this time, you know, going to be just one of those? Uh, maybe it's not a four-year cycle anymore. Maybe it's a five-year cycle. Maybe it's a six-year. Maybe it's a left-translated cycle. And what I want to take a look at was just where we are in this cycle and where we're actually going. Now, I received this message, and it's, it's one of actually many, uh, either on uh, X or other social media accounts that I have. And it says, Rob, I'm concerned about this market. It's not going above the 200-day moving average. There's a death cross coming, and I think it's telling us that what is going to happen in the stock market. I'm down $3,000, but it may go down even more. Not sure what to do because I'm stuck. Well, first of all, on this death cross, usually what happens is we kind of rally uh, a little bit after it. Ben did a great video on that one. Also, uh, Tommy Crown did as well. And when I take a look at these, these comments, this, again, one of many, even I start to think about because I'm like, you know, rationally, we have to do that. We have to uh, get out of our way for our own biases because I'm a big believer in the four-year cycles, but hell, what if I'm wrong? What if it just doesn't work out like this? And what if uh, you know things just don't turn around? I, and let me be clear. I don't think things are going to not turn around, but the question is when and the time frame. Are you okay with an eight-year cycle? Are you okay with a 12-year cycle? It just depends. So what I really want to take a look at and to kind of bring people up to speed is pretty much where we're at. And what I did was I just took a look at, and we talked about this yesterday, but there were some little nuances to it. This is uh, Ben's website, which I like to steal from as much as I possibly can. And it's the uh, return on investment. Uh, this is We're just going to take a look at Bitcoin. We're going to take a look at ETH, XRP, Litecoin, and ADA from the bottom of the cycle. So the bottom of this cycle, as you can see right here, was 2022, November 10th. Oh, those are good days. Bitcoin was like, I don't know. 5,000, no, 15, not 5,000, 15 to 17, I think it was a 15,770, somewhere around there. And then of course, you know, as we go up, we're like, oh, that's adorable, you know, but no one really rem remembers this part, you know, when uh, on January, uh, right before, or right, actually right after we had the approval of the ETFs and everything just took off. Everybody remembers this stuff right here, which is fine, I do too, because you gotta think to yourself, hey, is it gonna go on forever? So what I want to do is just take a look at all these cycles, these market cycles. Let's take a look at the last one and see where we're at in the cycle itself. And you can tell, like, there was quite a bit of volatility, especially right here, of course, March 11th. What happened on March 11th? Well, that was during the Cerveza sickness. Some might call it a coronavirus. And it dropped off. But then we kind of equalized when the money printers got turned back on. And now here we are. And look how darn close we are. And I didn't really think about this, that we were close as the last cycle. The, the ROI from the bottom of the last cycle, 2020, September, uh, you're at 3.38. We're actually ahead in Bitcoin, looking at August 13th, 14th, and whatever it is today. They're at 3.75. So, but let's go back. Let's take a look at micro. Let's I, I, let me eliminate this. Lim, eliminate this. Let's take a market cycle three. And we did talk about this and look how close, I mean, we're essentially right on the same dot. So I know people will take a look at metrics. They'll take a look at the moving day average, the EMA, the SMA. They'll take a look at fractals. They'll take a look at a whole host of things to kind of make sure that this is where it's at. But sometimes it's like we get overanalyzed. We get we get paralysis by analysis, but I'd like to take a look at this just to go, okay, where the hell are we? We're right at the same place. Let's let's back up. Let's take a look at market cycle two. So market cycle three, just so everybody knows, was back in 2015, all the way to the peak of 2017. Let's eliminate that. Market cycle two. And this one's a little bit different. We can see that. And I can tell you right now, if it was like this, I'd be freaking out too. I'd be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Last cycle, we were up 47, 47x as opposed to 3.7. You're like, okay, you got me. But remember, 
the volatility starts to go down as time goes on. So right here, this is going back to 2011, and the end of this cycle was at 2013. So yeah, there's not as much return on investment. That is true. So when I look at this, if I would have gone from micro cycle two and market cycle five, like there's a problem, but I don't really care so much. If I look at market cycle three and overlay the market cycle four, we're right where we're supposed to be. But I want you to notice one thing. Where is this going? It's going up, up and to the right, right? So if you are concerned, and I, I, I share your concerns sometimes or, or wholeheartedly, that when you take a look at these averages and you're like, what the, it just doesn't go up. I'm down $3,000. And we're going to take a look at why that is. So what do you do? You just take a look at some data and just kind of overlay it and see where it's going. I think it's going in the right direction, but I could be wrong. So that's just Bitcoin. Let's, let's eliminate this and this. Let's take a look at Ethereum. And this is where things get a little choppy. And I can understand this wholeheartedly because if you're into alts like I am, this is where you are probably down. And I totally understand. Hey, Randy Hipper's here. One of my favorite YouTubers. I met her in, uh, in Nashville. Great gal, met her, met her sister, her dad. Anyhow, so we're taking a look at this here for Ethereum. And this is where things go off the rails. And I get it because all coins are, I mean, risk versus reward, right? So for this latest cycle, uh -huh, we're up a whopping 2.69 back down from, and this is the bottom, which was June of 2022. So if you would have bought down here, you're doing pretty good, right? But Rob, I didn't buy down there. I bought up here. And I and I keep going sideways. I don't like this. I gotcha. Sure. I'll get to that in a second. But let's overlay this with market cycle too, because Ethereum hasn't been around as long as Bitcoin. Bitcoin's the first. I think we'll always be the best. If we take a look here, I see the discrepancies. Now everything becomes clear, does it not? If, if you watch channels and you watch different data points, you can see that if it's just Bitcoin, you're like, why are you all scared? But this is why. It's because when the altcoins come in, you can see that the last cycle, which started on 2018, I remember buying, I, I actually remember buying Ethereum like 120 bucks. And all the way up to here to the end in 2021, November 8th, it was a 58X. So when you do stuff like altcoins, this is where the panic comes in. That's why like sometimes you see a lot of the Bitcoin maxes, they just don't really care too much because they've already made their ROIs. They've been in forever. Or if you've been around for a while and your dollar cost average, you're like, I really don't care too much. But it's altcoins that get you. And I get you. And I understand. That's why I'm here. So let's take a look at XRP. This one's going to get ugly, I think. Let me eliminate this. XRP has been around for quite some time, I might add. So here's market cycle right now. So from the bottom, which was 2022, June 18th, to where we are now, the ROI is 1.86. Congratulations. That's not bad. I mean, if you're looking at like S&P 500 and so on and so forth. But if we take a look over here, over this market cycle three, now I understand why people are upset. <laughs> look at this. This was March. Oh, what is this? Hold on real quick. Okay. Had to mute that because there's some sirens in the background of my green screen for some reason. Anyhow, we see here 2020, March 20th, 2020. Bup, 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 bup. And we come all the way to here. <clears throat> that was a 12X, 12.72. That's a good number. And if you're on XRP, sorry, it's pretty boring and pretty flat. As opposed to what happened to market cycle two. Look at that big beauty. And this is where it comes from. People won't let it go. Because the people that in market cycle two, which started in 2015 and ended up on 2018, they got fat, huge bags. And I guarantee you, I can't guarantee you anything. And I'm not your dad, but I'm telling you right now, a lot of the XRP community, I mean, God bless them. They did a great thing over at Ripple, but you got a lot of people with a lot of bags and they're probably pretty ticked off that they went up a 673X and probably round tripped it. 
that's where we're at. I hate to say that, but it's just how it is. But not to be outdone, let's talk about ADA, which I just did a video yesterday. Let me get rid of MicroCycle 2. Here's three. So we start here in 2022, the bottom, December. And how much have we gone up? Well, right now you're at 1.39. That's absolutely not too much. I understand. But if you would have been here, it's pretty good. A 3X is great, 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 great. Good for you. Fantastic. You did great. Now, I understand everybody's going to tell me about the community. And this is across everything. Ethereum. It could be Chainlink. It could be Avalanche. It could be Solana. It could be Near. It could be Ton. It could be Ada. But Rob, you understand because the community is going to outpace it. And there's a lot of things that are going on. There's a lot of partnerships being built. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. We'll get to revenue in a second. But if you just take a look at just the hard data of where we're at, this is why people are concerned. Because the last cycle, you went from 2020, 2021, September to be exact. That's 118 X. So why are people concerned? It's because they're coming over from that last cycle. And that's where we're at. So I hate to say it like that, but that's what it is. Now, here's the good news. This is the altcoin market cap. And again, this is why I like Ben's website. He makes things so, so simple for me. Links in the description, you can check it out yourself. There's a lot of, a lot of this stuff is actually free. Now they have a, he has a paid tiers, but you know, it's up to you. But we have market cap one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna show you market cap one and six. Market cap one is a total crypto market cap. And market cap six is equal to market cap five which is the market cap minus Bitcoin and no alts or no, excuse me, no staples. It could be interpreted as a pure altcoin market cap. I want you to notice something in green is the market cap six and blue is the total market cap of everything. What do you notice? That the altcoins, they do dip and dive, dip, dodge, dive and duck. They do fluctuate, but what always happens as time goes on, let me reset the zoom. What do you see? Well, it follows Bitcoin. Bitcoin goes first, dominance comes in, <laughs> as Ben likes to say. I don't know if you've ever heard about Ben talking about Bitcoin dominance, it's quite funny. And uh, so far he's been right. And we come over here and it just kind of stagnation. Look at that stagnation right there, burp, something over here. But what always happens? Bitcoin hits, altcoins follow. It's not like we're stagnant all the time. This is where we're at. I'm not too concerned right now. All I really care about is staying in the game. And this will come back to the last thing. And my last point is this. I know it sucks right now. I know it's boring. No one likes to be here, but boring is where you make all the funds, all your money. Boring and when everybody's scared out of their minds. This is from uh, this is from a, a previous post and I get a lot of my content just by reading your comments. My comment section is fantastic. Even the, the trolls are great. I actually, I, I read it mostly for the trolls, but Daniel says round tripping your bags is one fast three year way of learning how stuff works. And I said, you sir are 100% correct. The only way to learn is make mistakes, painful mistakes. And Rotec that soul says the key is if you didn't sell, and I want to make this very clear. If you didn't sell on the trip down, which a lot of people do, you just dollar cost average. You'll see how that average magically comes down hard. This is crazy. My average on Solana used to be like 140-ish. Now it's 14 bucks. Unfortunately, if you were like most people, not us, I mean, you guys follow me, so you know what kind of what to do. You would have been at 146, 140 bucks. You're like, I'm kind of, I'm either stagnant or really not doing too much, but so like we tank here and Medalla cost averaging, now it's 14 hours. If you haven't done it now, maybe it's something to consider about moving forward. And that'll lead me to the last, last, well, one of the last points, DCAing. How did we do? Now this tool right here is free. And I'd like you to go there and, and sign up for Ben's site and put this into all your cryptos that you've done and take a look at it over time. I'd also like you to send it to your friends because, or your family members who don't believe you. As time goes over, that's the biggest advantage you can possibly have is time. It's one of the things you can't buy. So I just took a look and I said, what if I just did Bitcoin hundred bucks a week back when we were talking about the previous cycle? 
Starting 2022, January 1st. And the ending date is August 17th. And let's take a look at Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, Toncoin, Doge, ADA, AVAX, Link, Near, ICP. But you can do it pretty much wherever you want to. Look at this stuff. Look at this nonsense. Crazy. How would we do? Well, as you may notice, if you would have started investing when 2022, when things were going to pot, you're pretty red. Are you not? You're red. You're red. You're red. You're a loser. You don't know what you're doing. You're a moron. Crypto's going to zero. Dan Pena, he knows who it is. You're going you're gonna to be crash and burn. You suck. You're awful. Maybe I shouldn't do this. I believe in this. There's a community. I, I like what they're doing. Partnerships, baby. To the moon. And so on and so forth until we start to get to this magical area. When everything's green. So just like the four-year cycles are, this kind of happens around towards the end of the year. That sell in May and go away. I think a lot of us may have liked to have done that. And if you didn't sell a man, go away at the second best you could have done it is just kept accumulating or done nothing. And now as time goes on, you can see that in 2023, 2024. And here we are today. That's all you got to do. And the last thing I'd say is to take a, just take a peek and from their all-time highs. I think that's a good indicator for where these tokens, these cryptos are, if you're into altcoins, where they are from their all-time high. There's a great website, Coin Go Live, linked in the description. And you can find the percent price drop since its all-time high. You know who's doing the best? Actually, I'm not gonna show you. I'm going to have you do the research and you can see, and just, I want you to look at which ones are the closest from their all time highs. Let me make sure this is there. There, just to make sure. Do a little research. I can't do it all for you. I'm not your dad. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section. I know a little bit long, but I thought uh, it kind of resets the brain into where we actually should be. And then uh, also today, as you may have known, I was on to, at the Rare Evo event. Mostly it was, uh, it was a lot of great, great talks. I get to meet a lot of great people. And one thing that I noticed about this was uh, people were positive, but I noticed a trend, and it's not going to be very popular. And that trend is... Who is generating revenue and who is not? How many of these are actually generating revenue and actually making funds as opposed to, well, we're just building, doing these things. I, it was, I'm telling you, I'm not going to say who I think is going to make it, but I can tell you the ones that I talked to, the ones that are generating revenue, those are the ones that will. And those are the ones that have a good plan. So uh, I'll say about that, but also, um, speaking of revenue, we did a, uh, a deep dive into Xborg. Xborg is it's a Web3 ID protocol, but I missed, the, I missed really talking about the big thing that they're doing, which is revenue generation and how, they're and how they're grabbing that revenue and how they're building it off the backs, not off the backs. They're building it from their partners that they have in place, which are some of the biggest names in Web3 Gaming, like Team Liquid with 2 million fans, Team BDS, I think they have over, almost 2 million and Ninjas. They have like, uh, I think I wanna say like three or 4 million, it's in the video. And when I talked about this, I'm like, how are you guys generating revenue? And they haven't done, a, they're, they're doing a token generation event tomorrow. I did a deep dive, link in the description. And they're already generating revenue right now. They are revenue positive, which is insane to me. So I talked to Connor, he's growth lead. I'm going to have you take a listen to this, and then we'll do a little Q&A. This is about six, seven minutes or so. So just take a listen, and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. I was promised what I wanted to do was bring in somebody who could talk to us about the export token. Uh, Connor for, is the growth lead over at Export. Connor, welcome to the show for the first time. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Really glad to be here and looking yeah. forward to this. Yes, sir. It has been, uh, it's been quite some time because uh, when we did this, we, we talked to Luis. And uh, this was three, gosh, three or four months ago. And we did like an overview. The link will be in the description for anybody who wants to take a, to take a look. 
but we're coming cl up closer to the token generation event or the TGE. And I know there's some things that have stayed the same. Like you guys still have your partnerships with uh, the big esports brands, Team Liquid, 2 million fans, BDS, 600,000. Ninjas in Pajamas, I guess they were one of the one of the original ones, 1.3 million fans. But talk to us real quick about the TGE event, and then we'll go over the utility of the token itself as far as payments, governance, rev share, and gas token. Yeah, of course. So, you know, our, our uh, TGE token generation event is, is happening um, on Monday, the 19th of August. So very much looking forward to that. Um, we're going to be launching on... Swissborg, uh, Uniswap, and um, and Jupiter. What's interesting is we're going to be launching with a 15% uh, circulating supply um, to counter the kind of poor performance of, of uh, low float, high FTV launches this year. Uh, we saw that was was kind of an issue and, and wanted to be uh, take an innovative uh, approach to that. Um, that's something our community voted on. Uh, you know, we're really big uh, big on governance at Xborg and. Um, I think that that vote passed with 85% uh, voting yes for for that proposal. Help me break this down. I'm I'm okay with tokenomics, <laughs> but when we do the TGE, and we'll get to the utility in a second. So what are we releasing at the very beginning? Because I see you've got some seed rounds, which of course you know you got to keep the lights on, got to get the uh, investors in there. Project development and growth 24, reserve and treasury 20, community rewards 18, liquidity two, and 15 team. So what percentage actually goes out for the token generation event on Monday? So only the the community raised token. Um, so you see here on the side, pre-seed and, and community seed round and, and pre-sale. So okay. the, the pre-sale um, we just did three months ago in, I think it was May, right. um, that will be fully unlocked. Um, that was obviously for the community. The community seed round would also be fully unlocked. Uh, we did that in, in May 2023. Um, and then the pre-seed round was with Strategic Angels, um, guys from like Bybit, ESL, uh, Ethereum Foundation. That has a 12-month vesting now um, instead of the longer vesting. Um, all of the other tokens, like the team tokens and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that is still, uh, well, like the team is, is locked for one year, vested for four. Um, so yeah, we definitely in, in it for the long run. Um, but what we wanted to do was, um, unlock the community tokens. Um, you know, we've seen this year that meme coins have done extremely well. They've been, you know, right. doing a lot of fair launches, uh, higher circulating supplies on, on launch, um, very much community centric. And, and that's the approach that we want to go for. Sounds, it sounds like a plan because those, that's the one thing I can say about, about these meme coins. They did a fair launch. It's already out there. The circulating max uh, matches the max supply, so it makes sense. Now let's let's jump back. I mean, for the tokenomics, the link to the light paper, everybody will be in the description if you want to check it out. Talk to us about the utility, and then we'll end up with like when Monday comes around, where can they find a token? So utility itself is, I think, the big elephant in the room. What does this actually do? What is the purpose of it, and why would people want to buy into Xborg besides speculation? I see a bunch of uh, terms here, payments and fees, governance, incentives and rev share, gated access and gas token. Can you break those down for us? As Xborg, we build quite a few applications um, in our ecosystem that goes from building fan apps for some of the biggest esports teams in the world to we have a, a launch pad. We're also releasing a, a new type of app um, in Q4 this year, which we call the fan app SDK, which is basically a no code white label solution for games, brands, uh, esports teams, or organizations to uh, spin up their own um, uh, app that leverages the Xborg ID, so player identity, within minutes. So we'll be able to scale um, our protocol in, in a massive way there. And, um, you know, you, one of the utilities of the token is, is payments and fees. So XBG will be used for, for payments throughout all of these different applications. Um, what's interesting about that is, uh, that you know the the companies we work with you mentioned team liquid etc they have millions and millions of fans as as users and, and players and um 
that's a, a really big utility for us because if we can get XBG into their hands, that's obviously really valuable uh, for our protocol. Gotcha. And I think what you were talking about, this would come back to the revenue share. We talked about this offline, but when you talk about the SDK and building those types of apps for these huge esports uh, personalities and uh, teams themselves, you're talking about what you guys did here over at, uh, this is for Team Liquid. This is what you guys built then, also for a digital ID, and they're going to be using the export token. Talk to us and walk us through how that works. Yeah, so so Team Liquid is the biggest esports team in the world. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they've won the the most prize money ever in esports, which is like fifty million US dollars. Um, <laughs> you know, they have teams in, in, on every continent. Um, so huge, huge team. Um, they are. Uh, we're working together with with Sui um, to build My Blue and. Um, this leverages our technology, our protocol, and the Xborg ID, which is our you know player identity system. Um, it also leverages NFTs. I mean, we we launched early access uh, last month uh, to mm -hmm. two thousand um, Team Liquid fans, and it was one of the uh, the most active apps on on the Sui network. So, really looking forward to the public launch in in a few months' time, and we really think that we can be. The you know the most used app on 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 Sui with this, um, but in terms of uh, incentives and revenue share, like you mentioned with the, with the token, um, all of these teams uh, are our clients, so they pay us uh, you know monthly retainer um, to build these apps for them, um, and then we also I, I think I mentioned you know they use uh, digital items within the apps as like mm -hmm. clothing pieces and. Um, weapons, all that kind of stuff for their character. Those are all NFTs. So they can trade them, they can buy them, they can sell them. Uh, we also take a, a big chunk of, of revenue share from, you know, the trading fees and, and, and the sales fees that go through these applications. And um, as Xborg, you know, we've always tried to be community centric from day one. We haven't raised with VCs. Instead, we've raised with our community um, at an early stage. We've also only raised uh, through the XBG token. So we don't have any shareholders. There's nice. no one that needs to, uh, you know, get, we don't need to split the value um, with shareholders. We can give all the value generated by Xborg to token holders. Awesome. You know what, that'll lead me to, to my, my last couple of points and questions, which is one thing I like about you guys is that you went multi-chain. On this channel, we believe that multi-chain is the future. It's not just one chain to rule them all. I know you guys, you know, we're looking at SWE, Arbitrum, looking at uh, Avalanche. But then when you talked about how there's no, you know, VCs controlling everything, no one likes a VC coin. Uh, <laughs> I find it fascinating that you guys did it that way, but also that you stayed away from centralized exchanges because uh, between us, I know there's some listing fees between these these top tier uh, centralized exchanges, even the even the tier twos. So what I like about this is you guys are launching on Swissborg, uh, Uniswap, and Jupiter. Correct. On that day, where can they find that information? Because I don't want my the people who are watching this video right now to go to the wrong place and get the wrong token. Of course, no. So, I, I think the best thing to do would be to follow us on on Twitter and join our Discord. So we have a you know very active community, more than happy to to help you guys and and, and get you guys part of uh, what we do at Xborg. We're really community centric, so we'd we'd love that. I can also you know provide the the links to uh, the trading pairs. But I think the the best thing would be to go to our Twitter. All the official links would be there. Um, you know, we're obviously going to announce it on the day, um, and you know, only use the the official links. We'll have it in our our link tree as well. Perfect. I got you, man. I got you. Well, I'm glad this has come to fruition. It's been a long time, so let's see how it all works. So, everybody, just like we talked about, all the links, the safe links, will be in the description, and you can find more information on the review that we did three or four months ago. And that is it for today. So, Connor, again, thanks for stopping by and telling us what's going on. Thank you for having me. Yeah. All right, Connor. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So I uh, went a little long, but uh, guys, that's what it is. And uh, I have you noticed that again, to be fully transparent, I don't talk about things on this channel unless I invest into them. And I've invested into a lot of stuff. So Xborg is one of the ones that I have personally invested into, just so you guys know. And also, you may notice that I put on some negative comments about Xborg and what people have thought about that. And I did that specifically because not everything is 100%. So you're going to have uh, people that don't agree with that, and you're gonna have people that do agree with that. It's up to you to determine what is the best thing for you and your financial situation. But uh, I'm not here to hype up anything until it's great. I'm just telling you what I do, 
and what I did and go from there. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is pretty time sensitive, especially if we just take a look at it. But uh, that's it.